Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode I'm going to start off by taking this contract to rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Kerbin because I intend to use that technique, rendezvous, in order to get a rover onto the surface of the moon and specifically a caribou rover which is going to be pretty hefty. We're talking about 18 tons or so. So uh, it is a big rover and we will need to do some interesting work to get it to the moon because we currently still have a 140 ton mass limit right so uh, yeah we will need to do two steps for that I did make sure that I've got the contract pack sorted out I think uh, so now we have some station contracts presumably coming up soon but for now I don't see anything here that is particularly interesting nope okay uh, so stepping out and we're actually going to do a different mission first not the rover plus the rendezvous we are going to send a carbonite drilling unit to the surface of the moon to see if we can properly drill for carbonite verify that and also do some science along the way so this is the carbonite mining test uh, as you can see I've bedecked it in these hazard sort of color patterns here and this is the mining unit we've got a nose cone there that will uh, use the docking port to get off eventually. Uh, batteries, solar panels, uh, this is the carbonite tank, this is the carbonite converter, and hopefully, I, I, I trust it's like previous versions where the order didn't particularly matter. Uh, we've got a surface ablation laser light imager, and so that's going to be used for science, hopefully. And we've also got this solar particle collector also for science and then two mini drills from the carbonite light pack and that's that's basically it so we'll see if that works for us and then uh, the the engine here is uh, which one was it it was it was this one the rear guard again uh, currently one of my favorite engines and then the LV-909 here and then finally a swivel with two SRBs and the SRBs have parachutes, the swivel also has parachutes according to stage recovery uh, those two stages can be recovered the question is if we get too far into our launch the core stage might not be recovered because of heating effects but you know, we've got 3400 through the center stack and then on to the next stage so hopefully we won't be too far into it, we may be though uh, we'll see how that works out with uh, the re-entry effects and all Okay, so that is it. Hopefully we'll get a lot of our funds back. A lot of the cost of the probe is actually the science units. So you see 46,000 and if we take a look at our science units, the solar particle collector is 6,000 and the surface ablation laser light imager is uh, 4,500. So this is something we would like to reuse and we do have a docking port on top so that's good so that uh, perhaps a Kerbal can pick up the solar particle samples and reset it maybe even and of course we are drilling for carbonite and converting it to fuel so we can get back to the back to orbit around the moon and allow for that reset to happen okay so that's the idea and so we'll be trying to reuse this probe a few times here we go Okay, everything looks set, except I would like the SRBs to light at the same time as launch clamps. We'll light the swivel first, though. Um, I checked the center of mass and center lift. Everything should be fine. We've got fins. We've got a reaction wheel. We've got the swivel, which does gimbal. So, well, cross your fingers. Here we go. Ignition. And launch. Okay, and off to Smart ASS. Okay, into the clouds. Everything going quite well. Very smooth ride so far. We are past the transonic region, heading through Max Q. Okay, holding at 40 degrees for booster set. separation and they're clear very good 
Oh, with that plume. Oh, they're gonna smash into each other. Uh, well, they knocked into each other. That's not good. We might have to use some separatrons on them so they don't do that and we can recover them. But uh, they seem to be safe this time. But the way they were heading into the plume of this thing uh, makes you think they would heat up a bit. Um, I'm, but I think this this stage can actually bring us all the way to orbit if we let it. Uh, I need to assess how much of that I need to do. But if we don't use all of its fuel, the reading from stage recovery in the VAB won't be right. In other words, it won't be coming down to 4 meters per second. It'll be heavier. So we've got a little bit of a problem there. Hold on. Uh... Um, hmm. I mean, we're definitely at a good apoapsis right now. Yeah, I, I really don't think we need to use any more of this stage. But it's still got uh, half of a tank down there. It's probably not good for its survivability anyway. Oh, we can lose the no... Well, let's, uh... Okay, hold on. Let's lose the nose cone. And we're probably gonna bonk right into it soon, but let's see. Mm, okay, floats by without any problems. Okay, I think I can use all the fuel here, and maybe it'll be all right. Okay, well that's pretty close to orbit. Separation and ignition. Oop, something... Oh, it's reaction wheel got destroyed. But it was a small reaction wheel anyway. Yeah, we're pretty close to orbit. I don't know if that's going to survive or not. Okay, that's good enough. We are definitely in orbit. Alright, so plotting for the moon. Now, aside from just checking whether I can drill for carbonite, the uh, major issue is whether it's worthwhile, right? Uh, whether the conversion ratio and the time it takes is okay. Sometimes drilling for ore takes quite a long time without any kerbals, and we have to check out whether drilling for carbonite is really economical in terms of time and uh, the amount of trips it takes to get up. Technically, this probe can return to orbit around the moon with a full load of carbonite. So that is something it can do, but we're going to have to see whether it's a reasonable thing to do during the course of missions, or whether we have to wait until we get something more efficient. Anyway, here we go. There is the moon. We do have antennae on the probe, by the way, so that we can transmit the science. Actually, I wonder if we can do some science here. Collect laser data. Uh, only for surface-based observations. Well, that's fair enough. Maybe a particle? Collect solar particles? Uh, that doesn't seem very important. Eight science only. Let's reset that. I don't know how many times we can collect particles. I think it actually had a number in the VAB. That's why I mentioned that. Normally, you think, okay, you got to collect particles and then it's gonna have to be reset immediately but I don't know if it said something about like four samples but I don't know if that's at one go or not we'll see but I'm gonna save it I'm not gonna do it here well nose cone got destroyed that's expected um procedural SRB recovered very good terminal velocity is great same for the other SRB still oops oops Still waiting on the other... The other one. The swivel. Okay, that's a fine approach to the moon. Very well. Now these solar panels do not rotate. They have a good uh, charge... Charge up rate, but... They don't rotate, so I have to make sure to get them angled right. Okay, wait, we've got a message. Ah, uh, the swivel stage was destroyed. Stage burned up and the atmosphere is traveling at 2,200 meters per second. I wonder what the exact number... I, I, guess, I guess there's actually a velocity number that's maximum, probably. 
I mean, terminal velocity says 4.76. Uh, well, not really. But, because uh, that would have survived then. But, yeah. There must be some maximum velocity that it can sustain. Okay, here we are. We're very flat with respect to the moon. We need to get some inclination going. If we want to hit our target location. Okay, heading to periapsis to get into orbit. So apparently contract configurator is on the same alt F10 as scatterer. That's interesting. So it popped up when I brought up scatter to rebuild the ocean to fix that graphical glitch. Uh, well, but everything seems to be in order, I guess. We should uh, collect some particles and do stuff here. So collect solar particles. Uh, 3.2 science. Uh, well, why don't we just keep those? Can we collect solar particles, particles again? Hold on, let's review data. Okay, yeah, so it can do multiple times. Interesting. Okay, collect laser data, obviously from the surface. Okay. Are we low over the moon yet? Yeah, near the moon. We'll uh, keep these as well. So now we've got multiple data? Yes, we do. So we should be able to also do on the surface, maybe. And that's pretty good. Let's see about landing at the proper location. It's got to be a while before it's really under our orbit. And it's also seeming like... It'll be in the dark either way, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, we have a lot of Delta V. Maybe I can change that. Try and hit it sooner and in the light. Well, let's go around to that point and see how this does. Oh, there's an eclipse going on. That would also not be good. So here we're really correcting our longitude of ascending node to try and tilt our orbit. It's not really an inclination change. Well, it's probably a minor inclination change. But mostly it's that number that's going to change. As you can see, still keeping around 42 degrees inclination. We'll be dipping down, seeming to crash into the moon. But eventually we'll pick it back up again. That should be fine. But I don't know if we want to land there on this go around with the sun blocked like that. Okay, now the eclipse seems to be completing. So we can land this time. Well, it's two kilometers away. I guess I'll dump it now. All right, set. Now we're on the probe zone stage. Get landing gear down. Oh, that was a weird. I don't know. I don't trust the landing gear. I really don't. Seems dodgy to me. I think we're sort of landing short and to one side. Basically coming straight down, which is the simplest thing to do, really, when trying to land at a particular location. Okay, the other stage has been destroyed on the surface, safely, safely disposed of. I really need to use up more of the fuel, otherwise it's not going to be much of a test of the drilling, is it? Well, that's pretty close right there. It says 16 meters. Don't think I want to go any closer than that. Oh, it's getting closer. <laughs> um, uh, let's not get too close, guys. Okay, I definitely need a different view of this. There we go. That's better. Okay, we are on the ground. 
A little bit of sliding again. Like I said, these landing struts, I don't know about them sometimes. But uh, here we are. Let's see. Can we collect more solar particles? Only meant to be deployed in space. Okay, so we got one space bunch and one that's just for land. Okay, let me uh, close the collectors now then. Since it's sensitive, it said. Collect laser data. Okay, it's zapping the ground. Really far into the ground, in fact. And that is worth transmitting right there. 24 science, and we just have to transmit it. And it's bound dependent, so we would definitely want this hopping around on the moon. So transmit. So, very good there. Don't need landing guidance anymore. We have got our science. Don't know what the wheel stress was for. Was... Anyway. Um, okay. So, that's good. Let's drill for carbonite. While it's still daylight and all. Start carbonite drill. We don't know if there's any carborundum. That would be very valuable, but we're not there yet. Okay, so it's got a little bit. Let's see, it's uh, 3.15 here. Let's give it a day and see if it can fill up a carbonite tank. Well, it's technically been a day, but it's not been a moon day. It's been a... Oh, the landing strut's messed up there. Um, it's been a carbon day. After a carbon day, it's uh, up to 172 carbonite, or uh, probably more like 160 it was. Let's see um, a full moon day, or at least up to the point, well, let me uh, stop the drill, since it's going to deplete all electric charge. Yeah, I guess it's half a tank per, I mean, 250 carbonite per uh, moonar day, seems like the rate we're talking about. Let me uh, start the con uh, stop drilling and start the converter. LFO. So, how much of a tank will it take? Ooh, it's going to take a lot more than we've got there. Yeah. And uh, we, we had a half a tank already of LFO. So, that's interesting. It is going to take a while to do uh, this drilling and converting. I could get both drills going. I'm, I was just testing one drill. I know I have another drill here. Um, maybe I should do that. Yeah, so this time I'll deploy this drill and start it as well. So with that, on uh, one moon or day, we'll be able to get a full tank. Or 500 units. And as you can see, our electric charge is still balanced. Okay, we're all fueled up. You can see our total delta V is diminishing because we're loading up the carbonite now. I don't know if it's really useful to load up on carbonite, whether we gotta get a contract that says, hey, bring carbonite back to Kerbin or something. Okay, well, we're in the dark now, anyway, so I'm gonna stop the drills. And I'm just gonna leave it here. Uh, we will want to go to a different biome and do more science. But let me sort out the rover and see what we can do with that, and then we'll use this to milk science later on. Okay, so here's the Caribou rover that I have planned. It's got a uh, mass of about 18 tons, just under 18 tons. And if we take a look at Delta V stats, it doesn't read like this. But if we tilt it, we see that it has 1,032 meters per second using this engine, which is the Caribou VTOL descent engine, which has like 20 degrees of gimbal, so hopefully you can handle it. The center of mass is right here. We can shift the mass around uh, the li there's liquid fuel here, there's liquid fuel here, and there's liquid fuel in this. So if we need to, we can shift it around a little bit. This control unit is pretty hefty, pretty powerful. Let's take a look at the details. So the control module has 30 torque. Uh, 30 torque, yes, lots of torque. And 5 RCS, 5 kilonewtons of RCS. Uh, I've only put half of the mod propellant in. I don't think we'll need more than that. There is a docking port here. Uh, and we'll need that in order to push it along to the moon. So again, this is going to be in two missions involving a rendezvous, and so uh, it's going to have to have a, another stage pushing it to the moon to get there. Otherwise, if we try and launch this with its transfer stage, we'll go over the mass limit in the VAB, which is currently 140 tons. Uh, yep, so that's the idea. Wheels, obviously, they, they're really nice uh, USI wheels. You can 
have them like that. And there is this cargo bay. And right now I only have KIS crates in there, so we have a KIS inventory. This is mainly going to be sort of a traveling unit. And you can see a probe core in there because we're not going to send this crude. There is a room for supplies in the tail here. So when we uh, take a look at this, we can see it has 40 days of habitation, but only 10 days of supplies right now in the crew cab up front. But if we load up on supplies in the back, as long as we have it uh, 1,500, we have enough supplies to cover our full habitation time. So that is the goal there. So our little uh, Kerbals can stay in there for 40 days. And uh, we have little derp concentrated full voltaic rays. Again, those don't track the sun. We saw those on the drilling unit just now. Oh, uh, we can't actually have the supplies in because otherwise it goes over the SPH mass limit of 18 tons. Yeah, so uh, those are the solar panels we have there to run the wheels. Okay, well, let's take, uh, let's take a drive around and see if it works all right here. That has nothing to do with whether it'll work all right on the moon, but it's a start. So I'm not going to put a Kerbal in. Important uh, to try it out with the probe core. And let's see what happens. When we're landing on the moon using this engine, we're going to control from this docking port, obviously. Okay, here we are. We haven't upgraded anything at the SPH or the runway, so pretty bare bones. Let's see, moving forward. It seems like all the tires are moving all right. Not going very fast, but that's fine. Maneuverability, it has a little bit of momentum to it. Inertia, I mean. Inertia. Now, at the risk of uh, losing my funds, I'm going to try and fire up the engines. That's pretty dangerous. In the atmosphere, especially. Okay, so throttle up. SAS on. RCS on as well. Okay. Oh, does it not have enough to lift off here? Oh, maybe uh, in atmosphere it's not quite as good. Hold on. Ah, uh, brakes, brakes. Oh, hold on. Uh, control from here. Ah, yeah, sea level 0.54. I only saw this thrust to weight ratio 1.48, which is great, but sea level thrust is only 0.54, so, and I'm not going to do hack gravity or anything. Let's just recover this. Okay, so now we have to put it on a rocket and send it to orbit, and then send its transfer stage up, dock them together, and then send everything to the moon and land it at our base. This should be interesting. Okay, so here we are with the caribou packed into its rocket. Now, I don't have any fairings that can really go around it and still look good uh, because the fairing size is limited to 1.5 meters and this sort of pokes out even with a 2.5 meter stage. So the fairing would look particularly ugly. This uh, isn't great, but at least it doesn't look ridiculous. So we'll go with it. And uh, this is actually on a decoupler there. I, I remembered to reverse it, so hopefully it'll go off and it won't be stuck to the caribou. The caribou has that node on the top for some reason or another, so I guess this is it. Uh, there's a poodle stage here, and this is the main stage with parachutes. We're going to try and recover this. According to stage recovery, this uh, will come down at 3.5 meters per second. I put enough parachutes so that it could actually uh, come down full. So even if we decide not to use all the fuel in it, it should be able to survive. And we would not use all the fuel in it if it turns out that it was getting us too close to orbit and it risked burning up. This is a very expensive launch. The Caribou itself itself is pretty expensive. The launcher uh, is about 60,000 funds. Most of the cost is the Caribou. So that's the situation. The Poodle stage is going to be just expended. We're not going to try and recover that. It's a little bit weak on the thrust to weight ratio at the start, but the main stage starts at 1.68 and it should get us a lot of the way to orbit and get our apoapsis pretty high. So then this is going to launch 
and then the the tug, the thing that's going to push it over to the moon, will dock to it. And I have unlocked RCS finally. I did not have that unlocked before. So now we have little RCS ports. And uh, I did that, I, I was like at 87.8 science and I needed to do a visual observation around Minmus to unlock it because it cost 90 science. But that's that. And so let's just get the launch clamps all situated. Oh, I forgot to mention the base stage is four skippers. That's what we've got down there. And with Fenstock revamp, uh, skippers have this 1.25 meter version. Uh, they have another mount that allows you to make a 2.5 meter version, but I guess Ven's in Ven's infinite uh, wisdom decided that we needed uh, a 1.25 meter skipper, which is sort of iffy, but uh, I, I'll take it at this at this point. So uh, that's what we're using, and we definitely want to recover those because those are expensive. And so, yep, let me just get all the staging done, and we will launch the caribou, and then we'll have to launch the tug, which has the RCS on it, and we'll dock to it. We are, we only have the docking ports uh, juniors, so it's going to be interesting. Not the most stable connection I've ever anticipated. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. So I'm going to save it with the proper adjustments, and we got to make sure that Jeb has not snuck in. Oh, everybody tried to sneak in, except Valentina. Okay, and uh, we have the controller inside, so it should be okay. All right, let's launch. Okay, here we go. I don't have to tell you that there are all po possible ways this could fail. I mean, uh, the structural integrity of the caribou being mounted on the thing like this, the aerodynamics, um, yeah, so we'll see. It's really expensive, so I'd rather it not fail, obviously. Uh, oh boy, can you tell I'm nervous about this one? This one is really dodgy. We're, we're also sort of going to be tipping it over sideways. I mean, the caribou will be sideways. We're, I'm not going to try a roll program or anything. All right, and the TWR at the start is going to be pretty high, so I might have to throttle down. But for now, we are throttled up, and SAS is on, so ignition. And launch. And over to Smart ASS. Now this probably about the largest launcher that we can build until we upgrade uh, to get higher masses. This is almost 140 tons. The reason why we have to do this mission in two parts is because of the 140 ton limit. Not looking good so far. Gonna thrall, thrall down now. Oh, there we go. Caribou does have its own internal fuel, but that's for landing. Hopefully not that. I can't imagine that that's being depleted. Okay, 1,430 meters per second. Set. And ignition of the poodle. So we'll see whether that very expensive stage actually gets recovered. Um... Not that. I want to eject the nose cone. I don't know if this will work properly. Well, uh, let, let, let's slow down. Eject nose cone. Eject nose cone. Okay, nose cone has been ejected. I'm going to take uh, manual control to sort of sidestep the nose cone. We should get this into a higher orbit. Let's say 120 kilometers and put the tug stage into 80 by 80 first. Okay, uh, 135 by 100. Okay, well it's sort of annoying, but there's there's no indication that the stage was recovered at all. No indication from stage recovery. I saw the debris coming down. Uh, I have the debris displayed, and it was coming down, and it made it below the part where daily reentry would have done anything. And of course, if daily reentry did do any, I say daily reentry, but I just mean reentry heating did anything then stage recovery would have said so but stage recovery just hasn't said anything not even stage destroyed so 
it doesn't look like we can rely on stage recovery to recover this stage for us. I have no idea why not. Um, maybe I can slap a controller on it, and maybe that'll help. Uh, just to tell, I'm just time warping. I'm gonna time warp a full orbit to let the thing come around since I waited too long, I think. But yeah, I guess I'll slap a controller on the next one, and hopefully stage recovery will pay attention to it, attention to it this time. Well, that's the best I can do. Okay, well, Caribou 1A is a little bit behind, so now let's launch Caribou 1B, which is the tug. Okay, so in the interest of actually recovering this, I've uh, put a controller and a heat shield below it, uh, just so that the controller will be protected against the heat coming down. I mean, if uh, Sage Recovery uh, can't handle this, then the thing is I'm going to have to put landing legs on it and try and recover it myself. It's possible. It's certainly possible. Uh, but I'd have to tweak scale the landing legs higher and, you know, they, they tend to like to bounce around when you do that uh, these days. So I'd like it to just figure this out, I mean, Sage Recovery to just figure this out on its own. Uh, though, you know, I can try and recover it uh, myself if necessary. We'll see how that works. But anyway, here we go. Ignition. And launch. Now, the tug is actually just an extended version of the poodle upper stage we had last time. It's got a nose cone on the docking port, it's got RCS, it's got solar panels. And we'll see how that all works. It's a lighter load than the caribou. So we've got even more TWR. Let's uh, pull back on that. I mean, in theory, it's not so bad in this case uh, to go fast because we're not worried about a uh, huge payload swinging around. It's pretty streamlined. But I do want to get into a lower uh, orbit. I want to get into 80 by 80. So going up very quickly without being able to do the turn would not be good. Now of course if we deviate too much from the prograde vector, doing the turn is not going to work out. Well, no, we're already too high. Um, I feel like I want to use more fuel in this though. So we'll coast a bit. I guess we can maybe hit the target's orbit directly. Okay, well that's the end of that stage. Very good. Set. And ignition. We have got the RCS tanks tucked here, by the way. Okay, well that's a 14 kilometer approach. And then when we circularize, we could probably get something better on the next orbit around. We're we're pretty close to orbit right now, too. So, didn't even have to make orbit first. We'll do the whole rendezvous thing. Let's uh, eject the nose cone off. Decouple node. Off it goes. And now this is the transfer stage to tug. And it might have more juice than we need for this mission, so we'll just leave it in orbit. And have it ready to push another payload. The only thing is that the docking port's a small one. So that's not ideal. But otherwise, it uh, looks very interesting. Sort of like uh, an Apollo module, actually, if this was the capsule. It's a little bit tall for the capsule, but then this is the service module. Hmm, we've got some... Actually, uh, most of our difference between the t us and the target is inclination, it looks like. That's interesting. Didn't expect that. 1.4 degrees. Otherwise, we would have probably actually hit it. Uh, about 4.5 kilometers. Okay, we'll take that for now. Just so I don't waste any time. Alright, closest approach distance within 100 meters. Alright, let's get the caribou turned the right way. So I want to control from here. Target the tug and point that way. Now is this gonna be enough fuel for the transfer and getting the caribou into orbit? We do get to ditch that 
that stage there. And actually, I'll move the fuel from that stage into this one. So we'll get a bit of a refuel. Okay, here we go. Oh, shoot. I lost the docking port. Come on. Okay, magnetism and... I still hear RCS, but we've docked. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to move this fuel into here. Uh, into here, I mean. Since the cone... Oh, I can't move fuel. Shoot. Well, good thing I wasn't counting on that. I haven't unlocked the ability to move fuel. Oh, well. Uh, let's stitch this. Because we can't, uh, this is the center of mass for the caribou, so if we try to keep that stage, it would be completely unbalanced. This is the center of mass of the caribou because the engines for the caribou are right here. So we know that this is all nice and balanced and it shouldn't be hard to push it. And if we control from here, not there, this docking port, 2,322 meters per second. So definitely we can use this tug for other things afterwards. This is more than enough to push it to the moon, get it into orbit around the moon. Uh, what we would like to do, though, is to shut off this fuel, this fuel, and this fuel. Ah, it's only 1,500, so it's not too far off. It wasn't like I was going crazy with it, with the extra fuel. Okay, uh, I think if I... Remember, yes, the light action group extends those solar panels for for the caribou. Okay, also turns on the lights inside. Good. Okay, so now let me plot for the moon. Okay, well we have our plot, and so here we go for the moon. No sunlight yet, unfortunately, but we can't wait. Here we go. It's a pretty heavy vehicle, 35 tons altogether, so... The burn is going to take some time for the poor poodle. Not that long. Okay, now we have some sunlight. Very good. So we're still pretty early on in career. We can't even do resource transfers. Pretty amazing. I still haven't built the orange yet. The orange would have been logical for this, but more expensive. The orange is more full-featured and is meant for a variety of payloads. I don't want to build the orange until I've got the larger docking ports instead of the juniors. Though this is pretty stable right now. Yeah, this is definitely not wiggling a whole lot. Okay, there we have it. Our tremendously risky rover mission is on its way to the moon. Let's make sure there's no... Like, there shouldn't be any electric charge problems, though. It might be better to turn the other way for the solar panels. Let's see. So that the rover isn't blocking the way. Now, thankfully, the rover's control module, this one, has that huge reaction wheel, 30 torque in it. That's nice. The tug doesn't actually have much torque. That's something that the orange would have to have a lot of. We would have to have a lot of reaction with power and RCS and all. We also need the robotic parts. Maybe even some better engines. Okay, on to the moon. So one thing that the tug might have fuel for is actually pushing something back to Kerbin. That it would have enough. But I don't know if I want to use it for that purpose. We'll see. Okay, we have an orbit. It'll actually hit that part of our orbit first, but it should hit us over here afterwards. So we'll we'll hang out in orbit for a little bit. Okay, eclipse. We'll pass the eclipse. I always gotta pay attention to when the eclipses are gonna happen now. I think we'll have one more go around. And we'll come down on this orbit. Okay, we will leave the the tug in orbit though. So let's disengage. Okay, well that sent the rover spinning a bit. Uh, boink. 
Ow, ow, ow. That's not good for the solar panels. But, alright. It looks like uh, we're drifting away from each other now. Actually, let me rename the tug to Tug. So, controller, rename vessel, Tug. Uh, tug 1. Accept. Okay. On its own, it's got oodles of delta V. It's just when it's carrying a payload that it doesn't have that much. Okay, so now I want to control from here. And I want to activate the engines. And unlock the fuels. Okay, let's see the balance on the engines. Which way are you firing? Uh, should should carry us past the tug, but I gotta make sure that we don't smash into the tug or anything. It looks pretty balanced. They're very powerful too. Okay, that seems like an okay approach. Before I do anything else, I'm going to deploy the wheels. Make sure all of them are working. And apply the brakes. Always a good idea. I'm gonna tone down the engines a bit. Max acceleration is a bit high. For the moon anyway. Not the gimbal. Actually, the gimbal, I don't need that much gimbal. It's like 20 degrees or something. It's got mulch. Whenever it has supply containment, it has mulch containment. But I'm not too sure about the whole idea of having mulch in the crew cabin. Supplies, I understand. Mulch, maybe not so much. I don't know, but then Kerbals. They might do things differently. Really, we don't have to get too close considering, you know, this is a rover. It can drive over to where it needs to go. But just for the form of it, I would like to do it properly proximal to the thing. Unfortunately, because I've thrust limited the engine, I can't really trust the suicide burn countdown, can I? Uh, it does seem to respond to when I adjust the thrust limiting, so maybe I can. Okay, there's our shadow. We don't want to puncture any tires, so let's be gentle about this. I think we're on the ground. Landing guidance off. No skidding or rolling because our brakes are on. Something we can do unlike with the landing struts, which constantly have problems. Our electric charge seems to be diminishing right now. Um, that's not a great sign. Let's let's roll around a bit. Uh, SAS off. This is not going in the direction I want it to go. Uh oh. Um, let's go to docking mode, maybe? We've got some skidding, actually, sideways. It's definitely just going down the slope now. I'll, I'll put on the brakes. This is very disappointing. Uh, did I need maybe more wheels? Because this, uh, this is still pretty heavy 14.5 tons. Maybe this is not enough wheels. Okay, so. I will uh, need some advice. Obviously this exact rover worked fine on Kerbin, but it's not working very well here. What am I missing? So I'll wait for input from peoples, but I'll also look at uh, look up any information I can find. And we'll see about this next time. But we have delivered a very substantial rover to the moon. And hopefully uh, we can use it properly. We'll see for future missions. 
But for now, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.